Glory to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall forever be in my mouth. You know, that's a, that's a statement, isn't it? Well, I've seen times when, by the way, I appreciate that prayer. I've seen times when somebody prayed or somebody sang or a preacher preached and seemed like the Holy Ghost swelled up in my chest and I blessed the Lord. And there's times when when my heart's been cold and the word said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. I love to bless him when he's blessing me. And I need to bless him when I don't feel like he's blessing me. Sometimes when we bless the Lord, when we feel like he ain't, you know, I, 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 that, don't, that don't sound right to me either. When he's not blessing me, but causing my heart to sing his praise. It's like a fellow told me one time, said, when it's hardest to pray, pray hardest. And we need to praise God, even when we don't feel like praising God. We need to praise God when things ain't going right for us. When we're having tribulation and great tribulation, and our mind is on the tribulation, we need to bless his holy name. He is worthy to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall always forever be in my mouth. I think I probably misquoted that a little bit. but So I praise him this morning. Uh, the Lord's been good and gracious to me. I've had a great battle and time of affliction this week studying the Word of God. I've come to know my weakness and inability to do what I need to do. I feel like God gave me something to say, but I felt like I can't do it. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 11. Oh, I, I appreciate your prayers more than you know. So if I get to fumbling and a bumbling up here, y'all pray a little harder. Uh, let me let me ask you a question. Which is worst? And I'm just, I'm just asking you. Don't 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 tell me. Don't answer that loud. I'm not sure I know the answer to it. Which is worse for a man to take his life, or for someone to take an innocent man's life? Which is worse? 
I'm not going to be talking about that, but we had a a good friend of ours that, what, three or four weeks ago, five weeks ago, took his own life. He was a deacon in the Baptist Church on the Finance Committee, owned his own, own business, seemed to be uh, doing good. It came into nobody's mind that he would do that. We went. We went to his. We went to his funeral, and he had wrote the church a letter. And the associate pastor was preaching his funeral, and and he read the letter. And it was a letter encouraging the church to keep on serving God, to love God, and to keep on serving God, and, and, and things like that. In the end, he said, I'll see you all again. So I'm, I'm not going to try to talk about that, but I am going to try to talk about taking an innocent man's life and I think when we think about that we have to think about Christ he was an innocent man he wasn't worthy of that I mean he didn't do nothing to deserve it but I want to talk about another man today And the title today is David Tarried Still at Jerusalem. You know, the Bible says something about David. I don't know what he said about any other man that's ever been born. If it is, I don't think it's in the Bible. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. David was the hero of Israel. He killed a bear, he killed a lion, and he slew the giant. They sang songs about David in Israel. Saul killed his thousand, and David killed his ten thousand. King David defeated the enemies of Israel. But the enemy of his heart brought him down. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So it was with David when he tarried still at Jerusalem. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? James 3, 11 and 12. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine fig? So can no fountain both Yield salt water and fresh. First Samuel one through four. King David has just broken two of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they 
destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the eve tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof of the, he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent a messenger and took her, and she came unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. David starts a downward spiral. Soon he will break two more commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou sh shalt not steal. Sin will take you farther than you intended to go. It will make you stay longer than you intended to stay. It will cost you more than you intended to pay. We must deal with sin before sin deals with us. Daniel, first, second Samuel, eleven five through thirteen. King David spends sins for Uriah the Hittite, Bathsheba's husband, to try to cover his sin by getting him to sleep with his wife in his bed at home. You know, it's the same old story, and it cover your sin. It started with Adam and Eve. Covering their sins with fig leaves. A fellow told me one time, he said, you know, he thought, you know, everybody wants to know what the, the fruit was that they partake of. He said, I think it was a fig tree. He said, I think he went back to it and got the fig leaves where they disobeyed God and tried to cover their sin. I don't know about that. I, I sort of liked it. But David now is covering his sin. He's a hero. He's the one that everybody in Israel loves. He don't want them to find out his sin. So he's trying to cover his sin so no one will find out about it. And the woman conceived and told David and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah. And we're finna see how he's trying to, trying to cover this up. Don't want nobody to know that he sinned. And especially that he sinned. And what he sinned, that he sinned was worthy of death according to the Bible. And when Uriah was coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did. And how the war prospered. And he wasn't interested in that. He was interested in Uriah the Hittite. And David said unto Uriah, Go down to the, thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there, was followed, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all his servants of his lord and went not down to his house. 
And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then hast thou not gone to thy own house? He said, hey, didn't your journey weary you? Why didn't you go down to your own house? And you are said unto David, the ark, Israel, Judah, abide in tents, and my lord Joab and his servants, the servants of my lord, are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go down to mine house and to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth? I will not do this thing. And that was his that was his vow, that he would not do that thing. You are out of, was a good soldier. Jamie, he endured hardness as a good soldier. And David said to you, I'll try, tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So you are out, abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at eve he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of the Lord, but went not down not to his house. And that was David's third attempt to try to get him to go home. He figured if he got him drunk, then he'd go he would go home. But it didn't work. So David had to come up with plan B. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew the valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David and Uriah the Hittite also. So we see the plan for David is to kill an innocent man. Is this really David, the king of Israel? Is this really David, the sweet psalmist that played on the harp? Could this be the same David? So Uriah, David is trying to get him killed. David plans a way to have Uriah the Hittite killed so David can have his wife. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all these things concerning the war and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matter of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approachest ye so nigh to the city when you did fight? Know ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Amalich, the son of Zerubbabel, did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall? 
that he died in Debez, why went ye nigh the wall? And say thou, the servant Uriah, the Hittite, Hittite is dead also. And that's why he went near the walls. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevaileth against us, and came out unto us into the field. And we were upon them even to the entering end of the gate. And the shooters shot from off the wall upon the servants. And some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. And David said unto the messengers, Thus shall I say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease you. He said, don't let this thing seem like a bad thing or an evil thing. Don't be discouraged about it. Don't feel bad about it, Joab. For the sword devoureth one as well as the other. It's war, and people get killed in war on both sides. Now go back and make the battle more strong against the city and overthrow it and encourage thy him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead. She mourned for her husband's husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and by him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. When that word displeased the Lord means was evil in God's sight. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. And David wasn't even concerned about what God saw. He wasn't even, he wasn't even concerned about God. He was more concerned about Israel and what they thought about him. Second Samuel twelve. Missing some of my notes. Okay. Y'all be embarrassed for me. I ain't embarrassed. I just I told the Lord I was gonna get up there. If I didn't know my name, uh, I was still gonna get up there and I was gonna bring this devotion. You know, I went to a meeting one day. Uh, might have been a solemn grace meeting and. And a fellow, we was between speaking, a fellow come up beside me, put his hand on my shoulder and said, uh, um, I said, I want you to open this service when we start back. Caught me flat-footed. I mean, I come to hear somebody preach. I, I didn't have a thing on my mind. And I told him, I, I told him, I said, I said, you know, 
I don't, I don't have, I don't have nothing, uh, you know. Uh, and I said, uh, so how about getting somebody else? He didn't say nothing. He walked away. <laughs> and I, I felt, I felt bad about that. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you've been so good to me. You laid down your life for me. When somebody calls on me to stand up and say a word in thy behalf and try to glorify thy name, Lord, I'm going to do it. And it never occurred to me, he said, to say, Lord willing, I will do it. So that's where I am now. Uh, I said if I, if, if I have to read the scripture and pray, that's what I'm going to do. So, so I, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed. I hope I ain't embarrassing y'all. Y'all just bear with me. Because I ain't a quitting. <laughs> All right, I found, my, I found my place up there, so maybe I can. Well, I tell you what. All right, Second Samuel 12, I'm a reading. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men, one in one city, and one rich and one poor. And, of course, he's, he's, talking, about, he's talking about David and Uriah. And this is a parable, and... Uh, if you read it and it just stopped there and you didn't know the rest of the story, it'd be, be hard to figure out. But, but David knows in the end who he's talking about. And the rich, rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe, ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. <clears throat> It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him that took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was coming to him. And David was angered, very greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall, shall surely die. Now he's, <clears throat> he's con condemning his own self to death. The word of God for adultery and for murder condemns him to death. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. I hope. I'm encouraging somebody that if they ever have a hard time studying, praying, and have a devotion and continue to, to fumble and bumble. is to do it for the Lord and to do it for his glory. 
And if old shimmy eyes up on the top of the church throwing rocks at you, say, well, just take it. Say, well, God might be trying to show me something. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee my master's house and thy master's wife unto thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel, of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou dis listen to this? God's finna to tell David something that he had no idea that was in his heart till he got down as low as, as he got. He's finna to tell God, uh, David said, and this is Nathan talking to David, but, it, but it's God told Nathan what to say, and he said, you go and tell him he despises my word. And don't run. the next verse go down and said, now you go, to, you go and tell him he despises me. Wow. I'm going to find my place in a little bit, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in the sight, in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from the house, from thine house, because thou hast despised me. Well, I can't get over that. Can y'all? Talking about David despising God? And has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take my thy wives before thy eyes and give them unto thy neighbor and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun for, the, for thou hast for thou didst it secretly but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun and David said unto Nathan I have sinned against the Lord and Nathan said unto David the Lord has put away thy sin. He, he committed, he uh, omitted his death penalty. Thou shalt not die. And if you want to find out what David prayed, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of I'd, I'd love to hear heard Paul and Silas praying in the jail and singing in the jail and see what they said. But if you want to hear David's prayer of repentance, don't do it right now, but turn to Psalms 51 and you can read it. How, by, how, how be it, because by thy deeds thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely Die. Sandra and I, our last child, died at the age of five months. Uh, never came home from the hospital. He started off in Griffin Hospital and then went to Georgia Baptist Hospital. And then he went to uh, 
Eggleston's Children Hospital. And I, I, I just wanted to say this, that it might help somebody. It, you know, it's always tragic for, for a baby to die. There was one asked, said, is this man blind because of his parents' sin or because of his sin? And if, if, if you've had a child to die or had a child in your family to die and you ask, have I sinned some way that this has brought upon me? Did I do something that was wrong for it to be? And if you ask that question, then it's not because of your sin or your wife's sin. God speaks expressively. And when he, when he whips you or, or judges you, he lets you know what you whipped for and he lets you know what you judged for. And he'll, he'll let you know, just like he let David know. Verse 15. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah, Uriah's wife bare, and he was sick. said, the Lord struck the child, and he was sick. Verse 18. And he came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And you know the rest of that story. Y'all, bear with me. I got to finish. We used to have a, when I played football for Jackson High School, we had a, over the dressing room door back there, it said, uh, we've seen it twice a day, it said, uh, we were the Jackson Red Devils. Who would name a team Red Devils, you know? There's a sign over the door. It said, All the world loves a winner. Even the devil hates a quitter. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to finish this thing. <laughs> Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 1. I would tell you all again what a, what a hard time I had getting up this devotion, but, but I don't want to make y'all cry. King David is dying. He has one more test in his life before judgment, before the chastening rod of the Lord is being lifted. Now, King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Therefore the servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king 
may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of, coast of Israel and found a Bishai, a Shumanite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him. But the king knew her not. First Kings 15, 5. Back on the notes. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. 1 Kings 2, 10 and 11. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. David began to reign over Israel at age 30, and the days of David, that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. All these came upon the king of David, because at the time when the kings went forth to battle, David tarried still at Jerusalem. David didn't get up and put on the full armor of God. Neither did he go out to his rightful place. The Bible says we're kings and priests. He didn't go out for, to his rightful priest when the kings went out to, to battle. David is, is still a man after God's own heart. For our sins and iniquities, he remembers no more. The Bible said in Hebrews 11.32, the hall of faith. And what shall I say more? Time would fail me to tell Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also. Luke 1, you don't have to turn out if you don't want to, 31 and 33. And behold, thou shalt conceive in the womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Most Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom shall have no end. I would apologize, but I tried to apologize one time. Brother Bob said, don't apologize for the word of God. So I hope y'all wasn't too uncomfortable. I'm sort of glad God put me in that place. But sin, who would have thought David would be like the Bible said he was? I wouldn't. 